Okay. All right, well, thank you. I had a little bit of a problem with the, um, with the audio and I think people couldn't hear me, so I am trying again. I hope that if you can hear me, if you can type into the credits, we're gonna, into the, into the, um, the comments, if you can hear me, if you can let me know. So we're gonna talk about favorite books today and we'll talk about what are my favorite books and I'm hoping to talk to you about what your favorite books are. So if you could let me know in the chat, um, if you, um, so Vignesh, can you hear me? Um, can you let me know if you can hear me? Because I think I can see that my audio is working. Let me know, type in the chat if you can hear me. Um, so we're gonna talk today about favorite books. And so I'm going to talk about what my favorite books are. Um, and my favorite book of all times, my favorite book of all times is Pride and Prejudice. And it's by um, Jane Austen. And I've read this book. I read it as a regular book many, many times. And I've also listened to it as an audio book many, many times. And this particular version is my favorite because this one is the one with um, with Colin Firth. So the book is the same, but I like the movie edition with Colin Firth, the BBC movie edition, which it says here, BBC movie edition. Um, that is the one that I like the best. Um, so any case, I would like this to be a conversation with um, both you and me about our favorite books and why. And um, any case, so we had a little bit of technical difficulties. I, I really hope that you can hear me. So if you could let me know that you can hear me. Um, I have the mic and it's showing that that I have some he sound here. So if you can let me know in the comments, um, because I thought that I had a number of people that were listening to me and I was talking and apparently no one could hear me. Um, so again, I want to talk about, I'm going to... Um, share my screen so you can see my screen. And I'd like to tell you about this book. So the book is set in England in the 19th century. Um, and Pride and Prejudice tells the story of Mr. and Mrs. Bennett and their five daughters, their five unmarried daughters, and how after a very rich and eligible bachelor, Mr. Bingley moves in and his friend, Mr. Darcy, what happens? Um, because Mr. Bennett, his five daughters, Basically, Mr. Bennett's estate is entailed. What does that mean? That means when he dies, that his cousin, a male cousin, will inherit the estate. So basically, he needs to make sure that his daughters are married off before he dies. Okay, so that's what the story is about. Um, so, all right, you're hearing me very well. Thank you. Um, I think that it was a, a problem on my end. I'm using something called OBS because I want you to be able to see my screen and I've only used it once and I thought I was all set. I thought I really knew what I was doing, but I forgot to set up the mic properly. So usually when I go live lately, I've been just having you see me and not my screen. So that's why. So thank you so much um, to tell, let me know that you can hear me. All right, so Pride and Prejudice is my favorite book and I can keep on talking about, I have about, I don't know, about five or six different books that I have to talk about. Um, but I'd love to hear, I would love to hear from you what your favorite books are and why they're your favorite books. So that way it can be like a conversation. Um, so it doesn't have to be an English book. You can just um, tell me what the book is about. I know Vignesh that you are from India and everyone else, I'm not sure where you're coming from, but let me know what your favorite book is and why, and I'll let you know why my favorite books are, which this one is my number one favorite book. And I will talk about my other favorite books as well. So, at Pride and Prejudice, um, the main characters are Mr. Darcy and um, Elizabeth Bennet. And Elizabeth Bennet is the eldest daughter um, of Mr. and Mrs. Bennet. And basically, the whole thing is like, at the end, they're going to get together. But Mr. Darcy is very, very proud and very, very like almost arrogant and um, basically he does end up starting to like Elizabeth Bennet, but she at first doesn't want anything to do with him because of how he snubbed her. Um, so it's a lovely story. It will show you a little bit of what 
life was like in the 19th century in England. Um, and just really, really love the story. So the story shows how Elizabeth deals with the issues of manners, upbringing, morality, education, and marriage in a society of the landed gentry, which means that basically only the men could inherit land in 19th century England most of the time. So there was some rich aunt that is a um, that has her own land that she inherited, but for most of the people, only men can um, inherit. So Vignesh says, how long have you had reading as a hobby? Well, I've liked reading probably since I was in elementary school. Um, and my first book that I read, the first chapter book I read was called The K. And it was a book about this boy and his family that were on a ship from Venezuela because Venezuela, they, they were from America, but they were working for Venezuela. And they were working in oil and they were on their way back to the United States. But the ship had an accident or it sunk. And so the boy was survived on a little raft with a um, he, with an African American man, and the African American man um, was older. He was a he was a sailor, and the boy, because something hit his head, he was blind, and they landed on an island, and they had to live together and and work together to live on the island. And it was probably based in the 1950s, and there was a lot of racism in America then. Um, so it really showed how the, these two unlikely people really had to work together to survive. So that was my first chapter book that I really got into and read from like, um, I read that book from, you know, the beginning of the book to the end, because before that I really was not much of a reader. Um, and then I really like reading, but now I mostly read not on my phone, but on um, a Kindle. I read, it's a little bit bigger, so it's an electronic version of the books. Um, or I listen. So I listen with my phone and my headset, so I listen to stories. So I have listened to this book, Pride and Prejudice, many times, um, as well as um, many, many other books. Like I have lots and lots of audiobooks that I listen to. Um, so I like to listen to the books because I can listen to them when I'm walking. I can listen to them when I'm cleaning the house. Um, I can listen to them when I'm driving to work. So I really do like to listen because I don't have a lot of time to sit down like I am now and to actually to actually read a, a book. So I like to be able to listen to them instead. So, you know, this is my favorite books. Um, so Vignesh, you're saying in school days you had, you preferred mostly a lot of kids' stories. Um, I do, actually, I like kids' stories too, and I'm going to talk about some of my favorite kids' stories. Um, some of these ones are not for the little kids. I did read a lot. I loved reading books to my kids that were picture book stories, but I'm going to talk about a couple of my favorite um, stories that are meant for, for older kids and probably um, teenagers. And one of my favorite stories is called Ink Heart, which you can see right here. And um, I'm going to read a little bit about what the book is about. So imagine it was a possible, it was possible to bring a character from a book to life. Not like when you listen to an audiobook um, with such enchantment. Um, these characters, in this book, the characters jumped out of the pages and all of a sudden you have them in your living room. And imagine that the characters weren't the kind of characters that you wanted to read out of the book. Like you wouldn't want to read Captain Hook out of the book. Maybe you might want to read Peter Pan out of the book. Maybe you might want to read, um, um, you know, some of the lovely characters, but you wouldn't want Captain Hook. So in this book, there was somebody that was, he was a bookbinder and he loved to read aloud and he had a wonderful voice and his voice was so lovely that he drew the characters out of the book and the characters he drew were kind of like the Captain Hook type of characters. Um, but the problem, another problem was that for every character that he read out of the book, someone in real life went into the book. And in that story, his wife went into the book and two of their cats. And he read three of the most um, darkest characters out of that book into our world. Um, and so the whole thing is about how he's in search of this book because the book is very rare and he's in search of it because he's trying to read his wife back out of the book. So 
it's three series, and I do love this author. I think that she's somewhere from Europe. Um, I love her. I listened to the book as well as read it as a regular book. Um, and I have listened to it a number of times. Um, one of the audiobooks that, that I think it's the second one is read by one of my favorite actors, Brandon Frazier, who also plays the main character in the movie Inkheart. Um, so I really love this book. It is meant as a young adult book. Um, I do love children's books as well, but this is my favorite, like young adult book. And then I'll tell you that I do love, um, the Harry Potter books. So this one is the first book of the Harry Potter books. Um, I love those and I absolutely love listening to them. And why did I love listening to them? Because here's the thing, the person that reads for Harry, Harry Potter, um, Jim Dale, he is very talented and he has over 150 voices that he does in the audiobook. So he's very, very, very talented. So I love listening to it. I think it's like almost richer than reading it because you can um, really get to know um, all the different characters. So thank you, AK, English with AK, for joining. I um, had a little bit of difficulty when I first started. I didn't have audio, so I had to restart. Um, so my favorite book, I'll go back to that. I was talking about Pride and Prejudice. This is my favorite book. And I guess my second favorite book that I have listened to so many times. I'm going to have to open up another Amazon because I lost that one. And let's look at, it's called Enchantment. Okay, so my favorite, almost I think, I think it's a tie between between um, Pride and Prejudice and Enchantment. Enchant Enchantment is by Orson Card Scott. Now, he um, he has, a di he really usually writes a, as a, um, writes kind of like a scientific, um, science fiction um, books, but this one is not really his typical book. It almost seems like it wasn't written by him because I've tried to read other books by him and I haven't liked it. This one is kind of like mixing the fairy tale land into real life. And so this book starts off in communist Russia, actually in Ukraine, but it's before the fall of communist Russia. And there's a boy, he's 10 years old, he's a runner and he's running through the woods and he comes across, he comes across Sleeping Beauty. But at the time he kind of gets, he, he's not sure, he sees like this whirling wind and this this clearing in the forest and there's a whirling wind kind of like turning and he thinks he sees a woman on a pedestal but he's not sure and he gets spooked and he runs back home and at that point his family is leaving because they just they they are are jewish people and they decide they finally get their rights to move out of the country and they move so he leaves but he always has this in the back of his mind the book's name um, it's called Enchantment, and I hope that you can see it right now. I have up the Amazon page for Enchantment. I'm going to make the um, the book bigger. Uh, actually, it won't let me. Um, so it's a little bit bigger right now. Um, you can see that. So you can see this, like, woman kind of lying there, and the leaves are kind of, like, floating around because that's what he sees. And um, then he runs back, and they have to move to America. So that's it. But then he is, the book then jumps to when he is in graduate school and the um, communist um, Russia, U U um, USSR, has fallen and now he has the opportunity to go back and he's actually studying um, folklore and, and fairy tales from this time period from the, um, I think the 10th to 12th century. Um, Ukraine and he wants to go back and do some research so he goes back and he does his research but then he decides to go visit a cousin that lives near this woods where he saw this woman he still has been dreaming about this and he ends up finding this woods again and he ends up fighting a bear who ends up being the bear that is like the bear of winter right the Russian god of winter and he kisses the girl and he goes back in time with her so I'm not going to give the whole entire story but I absolutely love this book. It is my by far my favorite book. I love listening to it. They have two readers for the book, I believe. Um, and they have like a little bit of music that when you have um, the really scary Baba Yaga, who is um, 
the witch of the story that put um, Katerina, the name of the the princess is Katerina, which is the same as my daughter. Um, she, she's the one that put her in that on the spell, right? So I love this book. I love the mixture of the the modern times with this whole going back in time and going back into a story. So it's kind of like similar to Inkart because in Inkart they actually go into the story as well. So I guess I really like that kind of story where you're kind of mixing the real with the fantasy. Um, and yeah, so that would be probably why I really probably almost like this more than Pride and Prejudice. Pride and Prejudice is great. It's old fashioned. It's a great story. It's fun. Um, but I really love the kind of like mixing that that fantasy with reality and kind of like kind of telling those childhood fairy tales, but in a kind of more grown up way. Um, so I would say this would be my favorite. Um, and my, maybe my second favorite being Pride and Prejudice. But I really would love to hear what your favorite books are too. Um, if you could do that, if you could let me know what your favorite books are, I would love to hear what they are. Um, so that way we can kind of have a conversation of like, what, what's your favorite book and why? Um, that would be awesome if you could let me know. And also make sure to hit the like button. I'd like to, um, you know, like this, like the video and let me know where you're coming from and let me know um, what your favorite book is. So I will like to talk about, so let's see, um, do you have Amazon Prime for reading and listening to these books? So yes, I do have, I have like Amazon Audible and I get a book a month so that I can listen to. Um, so that's what I have um, to be able to listen to the books. Um, I also will get books from the library. You can actually get books to listen to from the library and be able to download them on your phone um, and be able to listen to them. When you went here in the U.S., when we borrow books from the library, we get about two weeks to listen to them and then we can renew them. But more often than not, I'm buying the books because I like to listen to them, especially my favorite. I like to listen to them more than once. Um, so I Amazon Prime has this whole thing called, not Amazon Prime, it's actually Audible um, that Amazon owns and you can get one book a month. You can pause it like if I haven't been listening for a while, I can pause it and just get, right now I think I'm getting a book every three months to listen to. So um, that's what I've been doing to listen to the books. Um, I think you can also probably find some books on the on YouTube that people have read. Um, so let's see. We have Call of the Wild. Anna likes Call of the Wild by Jack London. I read that. I read that in school. That was required reading, and I do like that book. Um, that book is, let's look that one up, Call of the Wild. Call of the Wild book. So Call of the Wild by Jack London, it is a book that is quite often a required reading, or at least it was when I was a kid, a required reading um, in school. So I believe, if I remember correctly, it was a story of a, a dog that was a farm dog that kind of ended up, um, I think he got lost somehow, and he ended up, um, or got stolen, and he ended up being, um, being made into a... Um, a sleigh dog in Alaska and eventually you know I think he heard the call of the wild wolves and that was why it's called call of the wild it's been a very very long time since I read that book so you said it's your favorite book um, could you let me know why why is that your favorite book of all the books that you read why is that one your favorite book um, I'd love to know I did actually really like it and I think I read a couple other books by Jack London I'm not sure um, but I'd love to know why that is your favorite book. Um, I did really enjoy that and I've read other ones. I think there were other, I love bo reading books about animals. Um, I think another one, I'm trying to think what, there were some fantasy books about animals that I've read, like kind of like ones where the animals are, you know, I'm trying to remember the names of, of that book series that, the animals are like the birds and the, the 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 mice and all that. They're kind of like the the kings and queens and all those characters in the book. But I'm, I can't quite remember the name of that book that I read. It was a whole series. Um, but I do really enjoy books about animals for sure. Um, this one was not 
just about animals. It's about the, you know, there's obviously was somebody that stole this dog off of a farm. I think the farm was in California, maybe. Um, you love it because of nature. And then they, they made the dog be a sleigh dog in Alaska. Um, so, um, or was it Canada? I think it was Alaska, a sleigh dog in Alaska. So I, yeah, I, I think the whole thing about being in nature. Now that's a place that I would really love to go is Alaska. Um, for sure, that's on my list of places to go. It's so beautiful. Um, so thank you for sharing why that is your favorite book. And um, so I said, I talked about three of my favorite books. Um, you like action as well. So what are your favorite action books? Um, let me know. Or you like the action in that book or do you like other action books? Um, my favorite, one of my favorite books that is kind of like, I think in action and kind of a murder mystery and I love Every book that I read by this author, Dan Brown, is The Da Vinci Code. I have read this book and listened to it many times. And I'm also trying to read it in Spanish, but it's kind of difficult. It's a difficult one to read in Spanish. I read Harry Potter in Spanish. That was the first book that I read and finished in Spanish. Um, I figured that I would be able to read these books because I have I have listened to them and read them so many times that I thought it would be easier to read in another language because I know the story so well. But this one is difficult. But I do love the story. Um, Dan Brown, everything that is, every reference to history and art is correct, but obviously he's making up a story, um, a, a murder mystery story. And well, there's some controversy, obviously the whole like thing about the, um, Mary Magdala and all that I think is probably, um, you know, made up for the story, but all of the historic, um, you know, far as talking about the, the, um, Mona Lisa talking about all the works of art, all the places that they go in, in France and in England to kind of look for the codes, um, are real and very historically accurate. And what I loved about this is that when I was listening or reading is I would look up on the internet, I would look up the piece, the, the places they were going and the the um, particular paintings so I could see that. And I loved learning about like the fact that, um, you know, I think one of the things was the, um, I think there was a whole thing about the code, like how they figured out the codes and stuff. Um, and one time was actually an escape room. The only time I went to an escape room, I'm not sure if anybody has been to one, but the escape room I had was about a museum and the codes, the, the different things, the clues we had were all based on this book. So I was really able to figure out how to get out of that escape room because I have read this book so many times. Um, so Big Nash says, I got to know um, for the last years, I had mostly um, like to read a book called The Camel Story, a book then missing a camel. So it was a story about a camel. Um, and then could it all, okay. So if you, if is that the name of the story, A Camel Story? Um, let me know if that is the name of the story. I can look it up. If you tell me the name of the book, I can look it up on Amazon and we can kind of like read a little thing. So this one here, The Da Vinci Code, While in Paris, Harvard symbolist Robert Langdon is awakened by a phone call in the dead of night. An elderly curator of the Louvre has been murdered inside the museum. His body is covered in baffling symbols. As Langdon, a gifted French um, cyberist, as Langdon and a gifted French um, 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 cryptologist, cryptologist, Sophie Nivor, um, sorts through the bizarre riddles. They are stunned to discover a trail of hidden clues in the works of Leonardo da Vinci. So that is um, basically the beginning of the story. And so um, the clues are visible for all to see and yet ingeniously disguised by the painter. Um, even more startling, a late the late curator was a was involved in the Priory of Sion, a secret society whose members include Sir Isaac Newton, Victor Hugo, and da Vinci. And he guarded a breathtaking historical secret. So that's kind of like, you know, the whole thing there. There's somebody that killed this, um, this museum curator 
because they wanted to know the whole secret and, and, and actually find, I think it was the, um, the, what were they looking for? They were looking for the, the, they were looking for something. I don't want to give everything away, but they were looking for something that was going to be, you know, worth a lot of money. And that was something that the prior scion um, has guarded. Now, I don't know why I can't remember um, the name of what they were looking for. It's basically the last cup, the cup of Christ that they were looking for. But the what the name of it, I can't, my mind is probably because I had so much problems earlier with this mic that, that kind of like messed me up today. Um, but in any case, um, I love the story and I read almost all of Dan Brown's books or actually listened to them and um, always looking for his next one. Um, he's had ones that are based at the um, Vatican City. He's had ones based in the United States. He's had ones based in Spain. Um, so um, so Big Nesh says, I don't like to read about the last years missing the camel um, story because it's sad. Okay. So yeah, there's some books that I've never wanted to read again because they're sad. And I, I get that. Like one of the books that was also required reading in, in school was called old yeller. And at the end, well, the ending is very sad. Um, it's about a dog that gets rabies old yeller. And I, I wouldn't want to read this one again. I don't really, I, I, I don't mind a book that's like a murder mystery, but I think a book that's just a really sad ending is not something, a really sad ending. I don't like that kind of thing. It's a good book. It was required reading. I know my kids didn't have to read this, but it was, everyone had to read this as required reading as far as I know in the United States. Um, so this book, um, Old Yeller, um, Sad ending. So, yeah, not one of my favorites. Let's move on. So, this one I think people know. I'm hoping people know this one, The Hobbit, and um, by um, by J.R.R. Tolkien, right? Um, the Hobbit and the Lord of the Rings series. I love this one. Again, loved listening to it. I did read them, but I also listened to them. And there was one series of the Audible books where there were different actors, and whenever they sang a song, they would have music. I really enjoyed that one. I felt like it was way more richer than actually reading it because you got a sense of like different actors and different voices for different characters. And I love the music that went along with that. Um, so The Hobbit is definitely a favorite and something that I would listen to again and again um, for sure. So let me know in the chat if you read The Hobbit or if you read The Lord of the Rings, if you like them. Um, I didn't like the movies as much because they were not true to the book. Um, but I love the visual of the movies. I think that that was interesting to see what um, the different places in um, in J um, Tolkien's world would look like, um, Middle Earth would look like. But I didn't like that it wasn't true to the book. Um, same thing with Harry Potter. I think the Harry Potter books were not completely, um, you know, true to the book. There was like too many things that, and I think whenever you're taking a book that if you listen to Harry Potter, I believe it's about like 26 hours, right? But if you take that down and you make it into a two hour movie, you're losing a lot. You're losing a lot. And that's one of the reasons why on this one, Pride and Prejudice, I really like the movie version of um, the BBC with Colin Firth because it's six hours. It's like six hours. So that way, you know, I think it's way more truer to the book because it's so long. Any other movie versions, one is I love Colin Firth, but two, they're two hours. So they just lose so much of what the book is about. Um, so I really generally don't like the movie versions. Even like when you come to, um, we had the book, the Dan Brown, um, which one was it? Um, I think it was the Da Vinci Code. Um, Da Vinci Code book, Da Vinci Code. Now this book was a long book too. If you look at the audio book, um, I think that it's saying, how long did they tell you that? I think they do tell you. I, I know that it's at least like 20 hours long. I don't know if they tell you over here, but in my audio, um, app on my phone, it will tell you how long the book is. 
um, and I believe it's probably close to 30 hours, but you take a 30 hour book to listen to and you put it into a two hour movie, even if you have Tom Hanks and I love Tom Hanks, you're losing so much. You're, like it's just not going to have as much of the details in, in that movie. Um, so I would love to hear, um, okay. So Big Nash is saying, let's see, actually, um, my doubt is for your school times, did you prefer books um, from the library? So when I took out books in the library, I was not really good about bringing them back. So I would always have to pay fines, even though they were small. I didn't take out a lot of books from the library, and that's still the case. I'm not good at bringing them back. Um, did you read about any other other ruler book? Um I know I didn't read that, um, Mein Kemp. No, I would not read that. Um, I have read books about, actually one book that I have read that is about World War II. I think it's by, um, let's see, we will look at, let's use this one. Um, it's by, it's called The Fall of Giants. Fall of Giants. Yeah, Giants book. And this one, I this one's actually a whole trilogy and it starts right before world war one and all the historic references are actually true and accurate but it follows i think like five or six fictional characters fictional families in america in germany in russia um i don't remember all of them but i think there was at least those are definitely england russia united states and maybe one other country there's like five families like yeah, Germany, I said at least three families, but more than that, probably. And it follows their their how they interact with each other because their their paths end up crossing throughout this trilogy. And it starts right before um, World War One. It has it's very, very good for the accuracy. If you really want to know how all of that started, how things started for World War One, how, how things started for World War Two. And the last one, I think, goes to maybe around the time of Vietnam War. Um, this one, historical novel, I really like this one. Um, yes, it's long. And I think if you, all of these books I'm talking about are probably not the best books to read if English is your second language, If you, especially if you're just at the beginner or intermediate language. Um, this isn't meant to be a, a recommendation of books to read for English as a second language. Um, but more for like, you could read some of these books in your own language. I just think it's a nice time to talk about favorite books and why. Hello, Mando, um, uh, Manalo, thank you for joining. And if you're just joining, the topic is favorite books, please hit the like button. Um, we're talking about favorite books. So far, we've been mostly talking about my favorite books. We had Anna who said that Call of the Wild is, um, her favorite book. I would love to hear from you what your favorite books are and why. Um, so I, I've been talking about Pride and Prejudice. I talked about Enchantment. I talked about Inkheart, Harry Potter, now Fall of Giants, which is Kenneth Follett. He's written a lot of like historical novels. Um, I think they're great. They may be available in your own, um, whatever your primary language is. I'm not sure where everybody's coming from, but some, a lot of these books are available in many languages. I would not suggest start in any of these books as your first book to read in the language. I'll tell you, I tried to read, I did actually read Pride and Prejudice in Spanish, but it took me a long time, but it was because I was so familiar with it. And I successfully read the first book of Harry Potter in Spanish, but that was, it took me a couple of years to do that. Um, so Alice in Wonderland, Anna likes Alice in Wonderland. Let me know why you like that, um, Anna. And remind me, I believe that you're coming from, um, Spain or Colombia? I'm not, I don't remember. And Manilo, have you been here before? I'm, and let me, remind me of where you're coming from as well. Um, so why is, why do you like Alice in Wonderland? I've only watched the movie Alice in Wonderland, but I have the book somewhere and it's one of those things on my shelf to read. Um, but I've only, only watched the movie for Alice in Wonderland. Um, I think if you're going to start, like if, if you want to have suggestions on books to read, I would stick with um, books that you can 
listen to as well. Like there's a lot of books that have that are free on YouTube that people have read. Um, so you can read along um, with the subtitles. Oh, Cien Años de Soledad. I have tried to read that. Um, I'm still on my list. I would love to read it in Spanish, but that is just too hard. Um, but maybe I'll read it in English. <coughs> but thank you. I know that is Garcia. Garcia. Um, remind me the author. I know Garcia, I believe, is the first name. I can actually look um, for that too. Let's see. Um, I'll look for it in English. 100 Years of Solitude. Garcia. Gabriel Garcia Marquez. 100 Years of Solitude. Um, so, and then we'll maybe we'll look up Alice in Wonderland. Um, and Gustavo Alfonso from Venezuela, thank you so much for joining. I met I met Alfonso or Gustavo on Hello Talk, and I've been trying to get him to come on to a live. Thank you so much. So, um, 100 Years of Solitude, or let's say Cien Años de Solidad, is um, by... It is by Gabriel Garcia Marquez, and the novel tells the story of the rise and fall of the mythical town of Marcando through the history of the Buen, um, Buendia fam family. Um, Richard, um, rich and brilliant, it is a chronicle of life, death, and a tragic comedy of humankind in the beautiful ridiculous and trotty story um trotty story of the um, buendia family one sees all of humanity just as in the history myths growth and decay of mercando one sees all of latin america um so alfonso have you read this one um, and let's see, I'm going to look up as well because we were talking, um, Anna has mentioned Alice in Wonderland, Alice and Wonderland, Wonderland. Who remembers when Amazon was just a bookstore? Um, I was in college, it was just a bookstore and now you look up Alice in Wonderland and you're getting all kinds of costumes, movie, but I remember when it was only a bookstore. Um, so let's look up Alice in Wonderland, and that is one of um, Anna's favorites. Um, so let's see. Um, Anna in Wonderland says, she, Anna says she likes it because it is easy and fun. So probably a good story to start with um, if you are reading English as a second language. So Alice in Wonderland is a um, 1865 no novel by English author Lewis um, Carroll. It tells of a young girl named Alice who falls through a rabbit hole into a subterranean fantasy world populated by peculiar um, anthro... Oh, I, that's a hard word for even me. Um, um, anthro... Bleh, I'm going to skip that word. Um, so even a native English speaker, this one right here, I'm not sure. I'm not going to be able to say that one. Is considered to be one of the best examples of literary n nonsense genre. And the tale plays with logic, giving the story lasting popularity with adults as well as children. So there you go. Um, so yes, it is a very okay. So going back to 100 years of solid, 100 years of sol, uh, 100 years. Let me look it up again. Um, 100 years of solitude is difficult. It's a Colombian by a Colombian writer. And actually I was listening to an interesting I was listening to an interesting story on um Duolingo podcast about the about the author and about somebody that had a signed copy of that book. Um so I learned a little bit more and I started again to try to read it in Spanish and I only got to the first page. Uh, but I think I'll try it in English. I think it's not it is not a book to start if Spanish is not your first language. Um, it's difficult but worth the effort. Um, someday maybe I'll be able to say that I read it in Spanish, but I'm not there yet. Um, let's see. Which kind of reading will benefit? Book or watching tour? Okay, so, you know, I think if you're trying to think of what's going to benefit you either for learning another language, I think listening with being able to watch, like, um, Amazon has these Amazon Fire tablets that you can listen to the book 
as and see it and it will like when it flips to the next page the auto audible book will keep on going so you can follow along um i like that but i also sometimes what i'll do for spanish is i'll just type in like harry potter audible book in spanish and i'll watch it because i'll just have every line being shown just one line at a time of what i'm listening to um and so that's what i do when i'm trying to learn another language but really today is just to really talk about what are your favorite books and why not necessarily what books you want to try to read to learn english because all of these books we talked about, with exception to maybe Alice in Wonderland, are probably not a book you want to read if English is not your first language, especially if English is like where you are. If you're like intermediate or below, I would definitely not start with any of the books I talked about. If you're like intermediate to advanced, then maybe you could start with Pride and Prejudice or Harry Potter. I definitely wouldn't start with The Da Vinci Code. I've tried to read that and I think I'm as far as my Spanish understanding is like intermediate to advanced. Um, so Pride and Prejudice is by Jane Austen. Again, the book that, that I had in the thumbnail, um, hoping that um, this book right here, Jane Austen, written in the 19th century, and I talked about it earlier. Um, English with um, Lexi, Lex, Lexi, thank you for joining. Um, from your side, where's your side? Um, if you could let me know. And if you're just joining, please hit the like button too. Um, so we're talking about books. What are your favorite books? I've talked about some of my favorite books. Um, totally agree. Books are a perfect way to increase the second language vocabulary, no matter what the book is, says Gustavo, who I also know as Alfonso from Hello Talk. Um, I agree. I just will tell you from my own personal experience, trying to read a book that is too high of a level, like uh, 100 Years of Solitude, for me, reading um, uh, Cien Años de Soledad, um, I got discouraged on that. Especially, I think it's like more of an old-fashioned um, Spanish, so it was more difficult for me. Um, English with Lexi says, Alice in Wonderland, that's awesome. Grade It's like grade six level. Um, and also, we had Anna, who said that was one of her favorites. Um and still remember reading it, and now I'm 34. So awesome. So that's probably a good one to start with. Maybe I'll try to read that in Spanish. Um, I usually try to, for myself, I try to read books that I've read a number of times in English, and then I try to read them in Spanish because I figure if I know the book really well, it'll be easier. That's why I can read Jane Austen in Spanish. Um but if I try to read something, if I try to read a book that I've never read, like 100 Years of Solitude in Spanish, then I get too discouraged because I can't really understand a lot. Um, so Gustavo says that he likes um, sci-fi. Let me know which book that you like for sci-fi. I haven't really read many much sci-fi at all, if anything. Um, I think that's – I was talking earlier about a book that I like called Enchantment, which is not sci-fi, but the author – Orson Card Scott, that's what he writes as sci-fi usually. And Anna says, El Z um, Zarayo de Tormes. Um, okay, let me look that up because I don't know that one. And maybe you can translate it for me because um, I'm not sure. But I will look it up in Spanish. Today you can also hear me speak a little Spanish. And, oh, that's definitely not what. Oh, that just, you know what? Amazon says they don't know what it is. So if you could let me know what it is in English, um, then I definitely. Okay, thank you for joining from Sri Lanka, English with uh, Laxi. Thank you so much. So if you could let me know the name of that book in English, because apparently Amazon is, um, I don't know what Amazon, like I said, when I started with Amazon so many years ago, it was just a bookstore, but now it's everything. Um, so thank you, Lewis, for joining. Let me know where you're coming from, Lewis. I think I've seen you before, but I'm not sure if I've seen you in the lives. Let me know again. Enemy Mine. It's about a guy from another planet. Let's look that one up. Um, um, Enemy Mine. Yeah, if I could spell. Enemy Mind book. Okay, well... I don't know if I'm getting the right book because I'm not seeing it. Um, any case, well, so that's that's cool. I'm not sure if I got the right book because I'm not coming up with it on Amazon. But 
Um, trying to think what I read, if I read any science fiction. My sister loves to read science fiction. Thriller books, um, well, okay, I think the most thriller that I read are the Dan Brown books that I was talking about um, because, well, they're murder mysteries and they can be a little bit scary. Um, I would say that is the most thriller book that I read. I'm not a, I'm not a fan of like a Stephen King book, something that I find like it's like really terrifying. I, if I feel like it's going to cause me to have nightmares, then that's not my kind of book. But if you like that, then you could let me know for sure. I would love to know um, and look up books um, for other people that like that kind of thing. Actually, um, if anybody's a, a fan of Stephen King, he lives like three hours north of me in Maine. Um, so, okay, Anna has said it's called, let's see, The Blind, The Blind, Blind guide from the from the river river okay let's see nope amazon doesn't seem to have it let's see i'll just type it into google the blind the blind guide from the river ah here we go this is it why didn't Amazon? Nope, still. Oh, yeah, I don't know. They don't have it. But what is that book about? Let me know. And um, Enemigo Mio Cuentro De by Barry M. Long um, Longyear. So let's look up that author. We have Barry um, B. Longyear. Let's see if we can find that. Oh, here it is. Look at that. Now I found it. All right. So Gustavo likes this book. Um, let's see. What is it about? It's inspired by the 20th century motion picture Enemy Mine, starring Dennis Quaid and Louis Gossett Jr. It is a story of a human combat pi pilot um, incompleted, incomplete in himself, incomplete in himself, taught to be human by a swarm enemy with which he is stranded an alien who leaves with the humans its most important possession okay well there you go if you are looking for a sci-fi book enemy mine it is by barry b longyear and let's see we have um english with lexi says my daughter of five years old our mother tongue is Sinhala, I'm not sure if I'm saying the right, but I used to teach my daughter to read both Sinhala and English books. So, you know, um, favorite books that I think for kids, um, these my kids liked, um, Rich, uh, Richard, scary, scary books. These were my favorite books, and why don't they have, okay, here we go, Richard, scary, um, Busy World, um, oh, here we go. Busy, Busy World, Richard Scary. I would say, or any of these, you probably can only find used copies of them, but I love these books for kids. Um, Lost World and Jurassic Park. I love the original Jurassic Park movie with um, Robert Williams. I really, I want to see the new one, but I love that movie with Robin Williams. Um, and I haven't read the book, though. I think Jurassic Park... Um, no, I haven't read the book, but you like that, Anna? Um, and English with Lassie says, Dr. Um, author C. Clark science fiction books. Um, you like Dr. Okay, no, I haven't heard of that person. Let's look that up. Dr. Um, author, if I can spell, C. Clark. Um... And I'm not finding it for some reason. Oh, did he Did he make the... Um, my daughter loved these author books. They were kind of cute. Um, if you have favorite children's books that you read when you were a kid, let me know those too. Um, my daughter loved the Richard Scarry books. She loved the author books. Um, and there was a bunch of other ones that, that we loved. We loved Winnie the Pooh. Actually, those are super funny, especially there's a audible version of Winnie the Pooh um, that... I think would even be a good one if English is a second language. It's super funny. And I loved, actually, 
listening to them as an adult with my kids. Um, I want to look for the Audible one. Audible. Uh, it was the whole collection, and it was really well done. Um, this one here, I think it would be a good one for people English as a second language. They're super funny, and I believe that there was like there was music in with these. If you were able to listen to these, these would be really cool books to listen to. Um, if you're just coming, if you can hit the like button and let me know where you're coming from. We're talking about favorite books, and um, I talked about a number of my favorite books. Um, let's see, one book that I'm still in the middle of reading. I have made a number of videos about Walden Pond. Um, this is a book that oh, Katarina, come on, say hello. Oh, can you see? No? Yep. So there's Katarina. Katarina, what's your favorite book? Um, well, I like the Harry Potter books, uh, which I read over and over a lot because they're just interesting. And I also like, um, I also like graphic novels because I like looking at the different drawings and stuff. Okay. All right. So, oh, you know, Alphonse is on. He's saying hello to you. Um, uh, he's coming up as Gustavo. So Harry Potter and graphic novels. And, um, you know, there's actually a graphic novel of Pride and Prejudice too, um, which is well, the favorite book I talked about at the beginning. So A Space Odyssey and Childhood's End. Um, let's look up Space Odyssey. I think I watched the movie. A lot of the, I like science fiction, but I, I've really only watched movies about science fiction. I've never read the books really. So let's see. Um, so, so the Space Odyssey um, by by Dick Hale. Um, so a strange and uh, ami uh, Amiga is discovered on the moon, um, and you can see that even a native English speaker, and especially I think um, the fact that I've been talking for fifty minutes, um, fifty five zero. Um, so sometimes I mispronounce things. A discovery has great impl impl Im All right, I'm not going to read that right now because I'm just getting it wrong this morning. I think I, I'm too much coffee or not enough. I'm not sure. Tintin and Asterix. Um, okay, that's awesome. And so what kind of book is Tintin? Let's look that up. Tin, tin. And as uh, not all these books are coming up. And, okay, so I'm not sure if that's probably not right. That doesn't look right. All right, so um, <laughs> any case, um, let's see. Favorite books from even when you were a kid. Favorite books when you were a teenager. Favorite books when you were adult. I was talking about Walden earlier. Walden is one of the places I love going to Walden Pond. And I have tried to finish this book. But I've only gotten halfway through it. We're actually listening to it. And my daughter says it's a good one to put you to sleep. Um, but I think it's kind of an important book to listen to. It's been translated into, I think, hundreds of languages. And Walden Pond, which I made videos about, is like famous all around the world. I'm actually going to make some more videos about Walden Pond. So this is one that I, I think is super important to listen to or read. But Truthfully, I've only gotten halfway through it, and truthfully, it could be a good one to listen to when you're going to sleep, um, but I think it's a really good book to kind of really understand nature and uh, appreciate nature, um, so that is a favorite, even though I haven't finished it. Um, so I talked about um, historical novels, Fall of Giants. Um, I think it's an awesome book to really understand why World War I happened all the way to um I believe it goes to as far as Vietnam. Um, Vignesh says that you do not prefer Harry Potter books. Um, you don't like Harry Potter books. Um, but Jurassic books. But you watch all the movies. So do you saying that you haven't read, you have not read the Harry Potter books or the Jurassic Park books, but you have watched the movies? Um, let me know. I have watched all the Harry Potter books. I have watched a Jurassic Park movie, the original one with... with um, Robin Williams, but I have never um, read the read um, Jurassic Park. I have read all the Harry Potter books, and I have listened to all the Harry Potter books. And my daughter is always listening to Harry Potter books when she's going to sleep, and she whenever she's eating, she goes and grabs 
the same Harry Potter book and reads it when, when she's eating. And, oh, she doesn't know where, so she keeps on grabbing the same one to read while she's eating because she doesn't know where the other ones are. Um, we also have the the um, the Kindle versions of all the Harry Potter books, but sometimes she doesn't know where the Kindle is. Um, so those would be, like my daughter says, her favorite ones, um, graphic novels. Let's try to look up a graphic novel. Graphic. What's your favorite graphic novel, Katarina? She doesn't have a gra a favorite graphic novel. If I can novel, I'm gonna look up stuff for. So yeah, oh, this is one she's reading a lot. This particular graphic novel, I've seen this new kid. This one, I see her reading quite often when she's eating. Again, she'll grab this one, um, and there's a no number of other ones that um, that she is often reading. So they got a lot of pictures. Um, I don't know why you would have an audible version of a graphic novel because it's really a picture book with like kind of like a comic strip almost kind of design to it. So I don't really get um, listening, listening to a graphic novel. That's kind of strange. Um, but anyway, okay, Anna is also saying Lost World is an original novel. Let's look that one up. Um, Lost World book. Oh, Michael, is it The Lost World by Michael Critchen? Um, is that the one that you're referring to? And let's see. Um, Gustavo says it smells of a Mexican tortilla. I was actually making tortillas the other day and I burnt one. But in any case, I digress. Um, so The Lost World, is this the book that you're talking about? Oh, okay, it, it is now eight, six years since the secret disaster at Jurassic Park. Six years since the extraordinary dream of science and imagination came to a crashing end. The dinosaurs destroyed, the, the park dismantled, the island indefinitely closed to the public. But there are rumors that something has survived. Okay, all right, that one looks like a good one. I might add that to my list. Um, maybe I'll add that to my Audible list. Lewis says, greetings, I think that a good short novel with a contemporary language is La Metaphor, um, Metamorphis by Frank Kaf Kafka. Let's see. Let's look up that one. Thank you for that suggestion. La um, Metamorphis. Metamorphis. Um, all right. This one. Um this one, let's see what this one, this one, these 41 tales written by 2nd century AD, in the 2nd century AD by Greek author, um, and they're translated from the Greek for the first time, offer an unusual insight to the preoccupations and legends of antiquity. Okay, that's a good, um, a good suggestion. You know what I loved with the Greek myths, and there's actually a really good series about the Greek myths. It's by um, what are those Greek myth ones, Katerina? Um, the Greek myth books. Um, Percy, Jackson. Percy Jackson. Percy Jackson. So per Percy Jackson. So these books, um, these books are also for probably young adults, but I like them, and Katerina loves these books. And this is the whole idea that the Greek gods never like went away and they're actually alive and well or still around and they're like in New York City on the top of the Empire State Building and they're still having children with humans and this boy here is the son of Poseidon and he has to go and find out who stole um, Zeus's lightning um, or else all hell is going to break loose. So um, this guy, Richard um, Reardon, also writes some novels about the Norse gods. He writes a series about the Egyptian gods. Um, so it's a great way to kind of learn about the Greek gods and about the different gods, um, but kind of read it in a, a novel fashion that's kind of fun. Oh, um, Kipling. Oh, I read something by Kipling, but I didn't read that book. Um, one of my favorite books is Captain's Courageous by Kipling. I think you're seeing the same one. So El Libro de 
la selva. Um, so what is that in English? Because I've read, um, I've read the, I've read one of his books in English that is called Captain's Courageous, which I forgot that was one of my favorite books. Um, let's see. I think he also wrote a book about animals. Um, I'm trying to remember the different books. Richard Kipling. Is it Richard Kipling, Anna? Richard Kipling. Um, so Richard Kipling, um, he's writ wrote a lot of different things. Um, the Jungle Book, the Jungle Book, um, was one of his original, one of his most famous books. And there is a book that I loved called Captain's Courageous, which is about a place, Captain's Cora Courageous. Let's see if I can spell it today. Richard Kipling. Um, and I can't spell today. Let's see if Google can. Richard, Richard Kipling, Captain. Okay, that's it. Captain's Courageous Summary. This is one of my favorite books. Again, I have a lot of favorite books. Um, and this one is based in Massachusetts, where I'm from. And it's a novel that follows the adventures of a 15-year-old. He is on a big, big, huge ship. It's, um... It's in the 1800s, and he's on this big, huge ocean liner going from Boston to to um, Europe. But he ends up falling overboard, and a group of fishermen from Gloucester, Massachusetts, save him. And it's by the same author of the Jungle Book. And he is rich, and he insists that they bring him back to New York City. I think the ship actually was coming out of New York City, but they're like, no, we actually are out for six months. We catch all our fish, and then we go back, and so, no, I will not bring you back, and not only that, but you will work for your keep on the ship, and at first, he refuses, but eventually, he works on the ship, and he starts to really kind of enjoy the work of being a fisherman. It's a lovely book. Um, I have not read the Jungle Book, but that's also by Richard Kipling and um, something that is definitely on my list. But this book, Captain's Courageous, is one of my favorite books. Um, let's see. Um, this morning, I'm not the best speller, truthfully. And um, and Amazon is not the best at knowing, being able to do like spelling correction. So this is um, the, the audio book is very good. You could read it or you could listen to it. I have it as an audio book and something that I'm trying to get my daughter to listen to. My son really enjoyed this. Um, like I said, it's about a tale of a boy. He's about 15 years old and there was like, there's a whole big, you know, storm at sea and he falls over. And when he falls over from an ocean liner, um, like a cruise ship back in the day. Um, he's a spoiled son of an American millionaire, and he's rescued by a small New England fishing schooner from Gloucester, Massachusetts. Um, and to earn his keep, Harry must prove his worth, and the only way is to be the skipper. Um, and so he has to work, and he doesn't want to because he's never worked a day in his life. Um, so how many books have I read? I have no idea. Um, hundreds of books at least. I really should read more. I'm probably reading maybe one or two books a month, but I think right now I'm working on Spanish, so I'm listening to a lot of Spanish podcasts, so I'm not um, listening or reading as many books right now, but I probably read one or two a month or actually listen to them. As I said, I like listening to them because I can listen to them when I'm driving. I can listen to them. I can listen to them when I'm walking. I can listen to them when I'm cleaning my house. Um, and so I don't really sit very often. Like when I sit is times like this when I'm going live with all of you and talking with all of you. So I'm not one to sit. Um, so that's why I enjoy listening to them and I can just have them on my phone and I can listen to them through a headset. Um, so, all right. Um, Gustavo says, I got, I got a roll a rapers. Okay. So they don't burn. All right. So a rapers, a rapers is a, a, um, very famous um, food from Venezuela, and someday I'm going to learn how to make them. And I was telling Gustavo that I burnt um, like a tortilla egg roll yesterday, so so don't burn it. Um, okay, so 
I will go probably for another 10 minutes. I know I kind of got a little late start because I had a sound issue. Um, but I would love to hear your favorite books. Um, if you're new here, please hit the like button. And please let me know where you're coming from. So I talked about a lot of my favorite books. I do love the classics like Pride and Prejudice, this um, book Captain's Courageous by Richard Kipling. I've read things like Moby Dick. I like it, but I think it's like a little bit too many words, um, a little bit too much description of the whales. Um, for that one, I probably would have read the, um, the abridged version, but a little historic fact, very close to here, is the last afloat whaling ship that um, that Henry, what, why can't I remember his name? Um, who wrote Moby Dick? Um, Moby, um, Moby Dick, I always forget that. Anyway, the last to float Moby Dick was Melville, right? I think it's Melville. Um, Herman Melville. So the last to float um, whaling ship, which obviously whaling was a bad thing, but back then they used it for making oil to light people's homes. The last to float still um, ship is the Captain Morgan, and it is about an hour and a half south of here in Mystic, Connecticut. Um, Anna says, novella ejemplares sen, um, serventes. Classic, easy, and funny. I'm going to have to look that up for sure. Um, let's see. So I definitely will look that one up. Let's see if I can find that one. And I forgot that I can cut and paste right out of here. Let's see. Um, I will definitely take a look at this one. So... Is this the one that, that, um, that, I'm not sure if that's right. Um, I will definitely look that up because I'm definitely looking for things. I'm looking for things that I can read in Spanish. Um, and, um, Vignesh wonders why I don't have any coffee. Well, I drank too many, too much coffee this morning, um, for sure. But I decided to not drink it right now because it's not really good to drink coffee when you're talking. It's better to drink water. And coffee makes you have to go to the bathroom a lot. So I will definitely look up this one. Thank you, Anna, for the suggestion. Um, as I'm looking for stories that I can read in um, Spanish because I need to learn Spanish. That's my goal. And all of you are learning English. So we've had a couple suggestions of things to read, like uh, Alice in Wonderland might be a good choice. For things to read in English, I think the Winnie the Pooh series would be good, and they're fun, kind of along the lines of Alice in Wonderland. Um, a lot of the books that I talked about, I said, they're not meant to be suggestions of books to start with for le reading English as a second language, but they're definitely really awesome books, in my opinion, and I think in a lot of people's, like, Pride and Prejudice is popular around the world, Um Enchantment I don't think is as popular, but I think it's my favorite book. I love listening to it over and over again. Um, the Hobbit and The Lord of the Rings, definitely popular around the world. Um, so a lot of these books, I think, are ones that you can read if you are um, reading things as a, um, you know, English as a second language, but a number of other ones like... Um, I think this one, oh, I haven't talked about Aragon. Some of these books, I would not read English as a second language. Kindly email the books to my email address. Okay, I don't have your email address, but if you want, you can find my email address on the about page of my YouTube channel, and you can send me an email, and I will um, type out a list of books um, that I've talked about. Um, just let me know that you were watching and you want the list of books, and I will type that out for you. Um, Aragon is probably the last book that I will talk about. This book is very interesting because it was written by a 16 year old. Um, he wrote a series of four books, but the first one he wrote when he was 16 and when he wanted to try to get published, all the publishers didn't want it. They were like, no, I don't want to, I don't want to publish that. He, they sent it out to um, many American publishers and the way that they published it is the parents took a loan on their house and they they published a thousand copies and then they went and did book talks and they sold those, those thousand copies that they printed. And this was before you could probably do like Kindle books much cheaper and all that, but they just printed a hundred 
um, paper copies, like, you know, this one, hard copies. And they went and did talks. And then somebody that worked for a publishing company went to one of those talks and discovered the books. And then he decided that it was a really good book. And he offered um, Christopher um, Pelioni a, you know, a um, offer to publish the book. And so that's how it got started. And I think it's so interesting because here's a book. This boy was homeschooled. So it means he he had school at home. He didn't go to an actual school. And he wrote this book. And first, no one wanted to publish it. Um, so, but after like basically risking everything, the parents so believed in him and believed in the story that they risked their house and they published the book. And now there's been one movie made of the first one. And he's got four books at least. I don't know what he's doing now, but he's he's now probably... I think this book came out probably 12 years ago. Um, the book is, um, so I don't know what he's doing now, if he's writing anything else, but he has four books and he's probably like 26 or 28 years old. Um, thank you. I'm watching you. I will send you an email for the list. Um, so, all right. Thank you, everyone. Um, if you are interested, again, you can find my you can find my email on the about page. Please subscribe. Please tell other people that you know that are learning English about my channel. Share it with them. I want to help more people around the world. Please like this video. And if you would like to suggest a topic, please put it in the comment section. I do take suggestions. This was a list. I had four choices and this is the one that won as far as what people wanted to talk about. So I do take suggestions for future um, talks. Um, and I look forward to the next one. I'm not sure when it'll be, but I'm trying to do one maybe twice, twice a month. Thank you. I had a little bit of technical difficulties with the mic. I'm using something different called OBS today. And, um, and that is why you couldn't hear me. So thank you everyone for still being able to join my live. All right, thank you so much.